Okay, so I propose we continue. Now we come back on theory again. Um, this time it's about the USB standard class overview. But I think now you already have some idea about this because we already use some of them. USB class, okay. I think you know what is this. Okay, sorry. So it's defined by the USBF. The class are supported usually by the OS system drivers, so no need to write your own. You will see that it's not always the case, unfortunately. And the, it ensures the compatibility between different USB host and device, for sure. So there is some incompatibility introduced by Microsoft. Wide range of application, not all standard class are mentioned there, so we've got the main one that we address. For sure, the first one we think about is the mesh storage, so nothing new. Then the multimedia transfer protocol, maybe you have seen this when you are using your phone with a, a Microsoft, uh, with a, a PC, that it's a file transfer for the multimedia files, so it's on the file and able to share the access to the file system. And, okay. CDC virtual com port. So now you are, I will say, master on this topic. You have done a host, you have done a device on this. And so we have seen that uh, some problem of connection, disconnection, but I think Lubos already uh, explained you this problem. It's required drivers for Windows 7 on 8.1. And so we provided one with a PID and VID, so it's a specific. And there is drivers in window, but it needs to be linked to a PID VID. That means you need to sign your driver. Uh, this problematic will be addressed later by Lubos. You will see that s obtain a signatures for your drivers from Microsoft is not straightforward, but it's possible. And also think that you can request to have our PI, uh, a PID from our company if you need it. But it's also thing uh, we will address this later. Uh, you, you will, okay. So on Windows 10, it doesn't re require any drivers anymore. So now it will be included in the system. So quite easy, but that's depending what you are using. Usually it will usually uh, you use the bulk transfer but I think you, uh, you know that. And just reminder, transfer is finished when the packet is smaller than maximum packet size. It should remind you one and on you have done yesterday with Dubosch. Keep this in mind because we receive requests about this again and again, just to, to this incompatibility. Human interface device, mouse, keyboard, gaming controller, so interactive oriented. I think it's topics we already covered. Ashida descriptors, you suffer a little bit when I show you this among of uh, number without explaining the encoding, but you can find information uh, on the net or on USB.org. Custom HID, uh, this one, I think you, we, you we have done this on the forum? Yes, we have done it, sorry, I miss it. But the uh, only thing, it's a load bandwidth. Um, okay. Device firmware update, so you have done the hands-on, you know the purpose of this. So also you can download a new firmware on the target, so it's supported as part of our system bootloader in some of our parts. That's depending on the which part we are talking. Some of them you, we've got the DFU and some of them don't have. So it's included in our embedded bootloaders. That means you don't have to write anything, so you can use our embedded bootloaders that you can't modify, you can't even have the sources but you've got the functional functionality inside, sorry. So, demo application and drivers, uh, Lubos already told you. Audio class, so this one have not been experimented during hands-on, much more complicated. So, you remember what type of endpoint for this one? Is a Kronos, yes. So uh, it's a real time, so you've got the uh, support of various data formats and sampling frequency. So ST library don't cover all the features and data format because there is a lot. Here just a slide to sum up what we supported in the different configuration of our library. So 
if you are interested in the audio, it's a sum up of the situation today, I would say. About composite device, so is it, do you already know? We have a couple of words. It's when you are mixing, I would say, two classes together in a single device. For example, the ST-Link, when you connected it, you can see three devices, a mass storage, on so, yes, a mass storage, you've got the debugging link, and you've got the ST-Link UART. Okay? So it's link of this. So it's really example. Um, it's not, I would say, possible from QMX directly. You have to modify the code generated to migrate things together. Okay? About the class support, so what is supported by our library? The mass storage is support as device host, and from the Windows point of view, it's plug and play. Uh, MTP is just supported from the host side. From the virtual com port, it's supported, and it could request some drivers for uh, other version from Windows, except on Windows 10, it will be okay. HID is present everywhere and supported directly by Windows. Audio, okay, and DFU with SD drivers. So, just to show you that when you want to do an update through, firm, through USB, you need some drivers. But here we've got a way to communicate with HID. So, we could imagine to use HID just to update some firmware without any need of drivers on your Windows. It's a possibility to use a custom HID because it's a transfer of data. So, we could imagine that on the target, when we receive some data, we just flash it. It's a way to update a firmware thanks to uh, HID interfaces. Okay? The only constraint is the bandwidth that is lower, but if you don't mind about the time that it's taking to download your firmware, it could be a solution which is compatible with Windows without any drivers.